May absolutely flew by, and some great mobile titles came out. With that in mind, GameRanks brings you the 10 best new iOS and Android games of May 2016. Quick note for you, this is just the best new games. We also do a list of the best free games that came out during the month, so look for that soon. Number 10, Warhammer 40k Regicide. Now, if you're a fan of chess and Warhammer, particularly the more space-oriented Warhammer stuff, you're probably going to want to give this game a try. Now, there's two modes, Regicide and Classic, Classic being essentially chess, and Regicide having a few mods. Modified rules. Thankfully, it kind of turns into kind of a chess plus rather than trying to reinvent chess, which, let's be frank, would be a disaster. Now, let's be honest, there's really not enough good chess games out there that aren't just chess. So it's not like there's really a lot of competition for this, but it is a great game and I would highly recommend it. Number 9, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons is about as pretty as an adventure game gets on mobile that is also going to pound you in the gut if you play the whole thing. Now this game came out on iOS in 2015 and several other platforms prior, but it's new to Android and if you haven't got the chance to play it, I can't really imagine a better time to do it. It's an inventive, colorful, and very well done game and now that it's on Android, Anything else on Android needs to take note that this is pretty much the standard now. Number 8, Talisman the Horus Heresy, which is another Warhammer game, but this time it's a board game. It's set in the 40k universe, and honestly at this point I would be rolling my eyes at the amount of Warhammer games that exist if they didn't keep managing to make them good. This is a beautiful and really, really enjoyable digital board game. It's based on the Talisman rule system. It's a great game for up to four people, locally or online. It's really enjoyable. Number 7, Mazes of Karadash 2, which is a huge scale up from the original game. I don't know if you played it. It was kind of a small scale RPG meant for small play sessions, basically more like a mobile game, whereas Karadash 2 essentially is a full scale RPG. It's huge compared to the first one. Like, it's basically the difference between a mobile game and a handheld game. It runs on a turn-based battle system, which is probably my favorite way to do that kind of thing. I mean, I like me some real time, but I really like me some turn-based. Yeah, I'm that kind of nerd. And you essentially crawl dungeons. It sounds pretty familiar, but in all honesty, it's just such a well-executed version. If you liked PC dungeon crawling games from like the mid-90s, that is Mazes of Karadash 2. Number 6, Titan Quest, which is a PC game from a while back, has finally been ported to mobile, like a lot of great PC games from that era. Titan Quest is essentially an action RPG combined with a hack and slash. This is a game that has a completely different look to it, but was often very positive compared to Diablo. And if you understand what that means, you know it plays a lot like Diablo, but isn't looked at as a ripoff. In fact, is favorably compared to basically what is considered the grandpapa of PC action RPGs. Number 5, Rush Rally 2, which I'm gonna go ahead and say is I think possibly the best racing game on mobile. And believe me, that is pretty high billing because there are about 4 billion racing games on mobile. And it's not just because of the graphics, I'm actually gonna go ahead and say that it's a perfect balance of simulation and arcade, and its track design is Primo. It does everything pretty much better than any other racing game on mobile that I have played, and I've played quite a few of them. It's a little different from the original Rush Rally, which was a top-down game, and this is more of a 3D, how everybody has made a racing game since 1996 version of racing game, but it's a welcome change because it's executed perfectly. Number 4, Castles of Mad King Ludwig is a digital version of the creative board game that essentially literally is competitive building of castles. It's about pricing, it's about pieces, and it's actually a ton of fun. Now it's an actual physical board game as well and this is the first digital version. As such the art is a little bit rudimentary and hopefully in future updates that gets expanded upon but as far as fun you really can't beat this as far as board games. Number three like Brothers A Tale of Two Sons Assassin's Creed Identity just hit Android this month and is pretty much exactly what an Assassin's Creed game on mobile should have been for a very long time. Now it's not a true open world it is level based but I have to say the touch controls really are phenomenal and, and to say that about a 3D game that functions like a full Assassin's Creed it's actually pretty impressive. I would maybe call it Arcade Creed but has a little bit less depth than the mainline games but is significantly more similar than other mobile Assassin's Creed games. And I'd say pretty much nails it. 
Number two, Romancing Saga 2, which is actually the fourth game in the Saga series. The first three originally branded here as Final Fantasy Legend. Romancing Saga 2 is a classic that we kind of missed in America and contains a really interesting scenario system, which makes it so that as they claim, no two players will experience the story the same way. It also has remastered graphics, but unlike a lot of remasters, does not touch the style of the original, thankfully. And finally, number one, Lifeline Whiteout, which is an interactive fiction that actually is one of the few apps that legitimately takes advantage of the Apple Watch, with a lot of the events actually depending on what time it is. It's a fourth game in the series, and the series has gradually gotten better throughout the four. If you're a fan of interactive novels, this is definitely the way to go for May 2016. I mean, let's be real, an interactive novel can either be really, really good or really, really bad. And fortunately, this is in the first of those two categories. It is a fantastic interactive novel and definitely proves that it's a viable genre. And one bonus game for you this month, Imbroglio. It's somewhere between a board game, a maze game, and a combat game, and is ridiculously easy to learn to play, while still containing lots of depth. And that's it for May 2016. Did you play any great games, including any of the ones on this list? Let's meet in the comments and have a discussion about what the best mobile games were for May 2016. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. So, we upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, thank you for watching this video, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.